My name is Christina Eilekmetz. I lead the R&D organization in Takeda Pharmaceuticals for plasma-derived therapies, a separate business unit that is um, only working with the plasma-derived therapies, bringing them to patients with, uh, for treatment of different um, diseases and disorders. One of the conditions of, of um, key focus areas for us in Takeda PID is in PDT is the CIDP indication. Um, CIDP is chronic inflammatory polyradicular neuropathy that um, um, is a chronic condition um, impacting patients' peripheral nerves. It's an autoimmune condition, and um, mostly the um, body is attacking the myelin sheath of the peripheral nerves, uh, causing thereby um, sensation abnormalities, um, loss of function, also pain, and is related to um, disability for the patients. It's a chronic condi condition that the patients suffer from um, throughout their lives over many years. To alleviate this condition, the, the frontline therapies have been for many years the um, corticosteroids and the immunoglobulin infusions. And this is also how the current guidelines capture the, the first line therapies. Um, immunoglobulins really have um, been game changers for the patients over many years when they started to be used. Um, firstly, uh, infused intravenously, but then also been developed for administration in subcutaneous form. And that has been the, the progress um, that has allowed patients to um, take more ownership of the therapies because subcutaneous administration of an important um, therapy for them that they take lifelong would open up opportunities for administration at home or um, having more convenience when it comes to treatment administration. So that has been for Takeda plasma derived therapies, um, a focus area to advance the, the administration mode and um, um, administration um, opportunities for the immunoglobulin therapies for CIDP patients. Takeda P PDT is um, we are, we are actually really proud at having a very broad immunoglobulin portfolio. We can offer the patients immunoglobulin as intravenous therapy, also as, as conventional subcutaneous therapy and uh, facilitated subcutaneous therapy. And for the treatment of CIDP, the intravenous um, immunoglobulin has been available for many years, but we're very excited now to be able to offer the facilitated subcutaneous administration of immunoglobulin, and that is the Hyqvia compound. It's, it's actually the first and only facilitated immunoglobulin on the market. And what makes it special is that um, that combination with the hyaluronidase component um, used um, as part of the therapy allows for a, a big volume administration subcutaneously. The recombinant human hyaluronidase administered pre-IG uh, pre administration would uh, uh, kind of loosen up the subcutaneous space to allow for high volume to be administered subcutaneously. And um, we have now been testing Hyqvia in CIDP. We reported the results last year for the pivotal study, the advanced CIDP-1 trial, where Hyqvia was used um, in maintenance therapy for CIDP. And this year at the PNS meeting, we were proud to announce the maintenance study, um, the, the long-term um, extension study results. Um, so why is it um, we're so excited to be able to offer patients this opportunity? So what it really gives the patients is now the confidence that not only for the initial treatment of the CIDP, as we showed um, in the pivotal trial and um, what actually served as, as basis for labeling for Hyqvia and use of CIDP, We've now also shown in the advanced CIDP3 trial, which was the long-term extension study, that over the long period of therapy, this treatment gives them uh, a very good safety tolerability profile, as well as a very low relapse rate that was observed. So it maintains the, the condition under control and gives the patients um, the opportunity to live their lives. And it, it happens with the um, opportunity of um, infrequent administration 
and less number of needle sticks when compared to a conventional stick therapy. It's quite an important difference. Um, um, CIDP, like all neuroimmunology conditions, warrants rather high volumes of immunoglobulins to be used. Um, when a conventional stick is used, then with one needle stick, one can only administer subcutaneously 30 to 60 milliliters of the drug. Hence, you would need multiple needle sticks, and usually it would be a weekly administration that is followed. Hycuvia is, is um, totally different. Hycuvia carries the benefits of an IV administration in terms of the same volume can be administered just once monthly, pretty much every three weeks, every four weeks. We showed in advanced uh, CIDP3 trial that um, over 80% of um, doses were actually administered once every four weeks. And um, we showed also that uh, over 90% of all the doses, more than 92% of all the doses were administered over just two injection sites. So less needle sticks, infrequent administration, and the same control. Um, what does it mean for the patient? We've uh, shown now in this uh, long-term extension study that patients can maintain that infrequent administration regimen and be in good control of the disease and they have um, a, a good treatment experience. We had only, um, if I'm correct in saying, I think we had close to 3,500 um, administrations across the period of the study. And only in three cases, um, patients had to either reduce the, the speed of the administration or stop the administration too early because of the um, tolerability related issues. So it's very well tolerated. The study is also maybe unique, um, me to mention here. It, it is by far the longest uh, study of its kind in CIDP patients. Ob uh, so that the period of observation, uh, we had up to 77 months uh, follow-up time with some patients. So, so a long study collecting cumulatively over 220 years of patient uh, data, 220 patient years of or follow-up data. So it gives us good confidence that we are providing our patients with a potential more convenient, more flexible opportunity to choose that therapy if it fits their lifestyle and where they are in, in the control of the disease. Hycuvia can be administered either at home, in the infusion center, or it can be administered by healthcare professional or by patient themselves. And um, um, it is while it is related to some complexity with the needle sets and, and the vials for sure, but um, uh, in essence, the infusion itself is not very long. Um, we documented it in advanced CRDP3 study. We actually observed that um, the mean time for the infusions was uh, a little more than two hours. So we observed a little less infusion time in the pivotal advanced CRDP1 study, 125 minutes, I think was the mean that. So it's about two hours infusion time. And as I mentioned earlier, it's um, mostly two needle sticks. You could potentially get 60 gram of immunoglobulin um, with 600 milligrams of infusion, which could be done with only one infusion site. That's in our label. But we saw in the study that most patients prefer two needle sticks for their dose. And the, the median dose, um, in our long-term um, extension study was 64 grams, you know, the monthly dose, median dose. So, uh, I mean, the complexity of administration really is related to assembling the needle sticks and, and tubes um, and less so with the infusion. And it would be for the patient possible to do it at home, potentially up to only one time in month if, if yeah. it's the treatment regimen. once the patient gets diagnosed with the disease is, is a very dramatic and, um, and traumatic um, event in, in a person's life. It, it is not a genetically inherited condition. It is an acquired condition with an immune mediated background, meaning we don't really know what triggers the, the start of the chronic inflammatory um, disease that affects uh, peripheral nerves. But in essence, what the patient um, would, um, would then observe would be loss of um, function, maybe tingling, maybe loss of uh, sensation in arms, legs. It can be in periphery, 
can also be proximal um, arms and legs. Um, most uh, prominent and maybe the most debilitating is the impact on the function. So loss of strength, um, inability to do the daily, um, uh, daily action, um, in that worst case is taking the patient to a wheelchair um, or, or spending time in hospital bed. So a condition that is deeply debilitating and because of its chronic nature, it's, um, um, there are ex exacerbations in the disease condition. So the therapy is firstly needed to have, and that's why the therapeutic paradigm is to have induction therapy first to um, take control of, of the exacerbation or the worsening of patient's condition, and then continue with the maintenance therapy to keep the disease under control. And in many cases, the, the immunoglobulin therapy, which as already mentioned, it is the first line therapy as the um, European Academy of, um, uh, of Neurology, as well as the Peripheral Nerve Society guidelines, um, the joint guidelines um, um, recommend. It gives the patients back uh, the functionality, prevents the disease from further first worsening and enables them to continue with their lives. I think it's really important that the healthcare professionals would just keep the watch out for CRDP, think about the condition. Like with all rare conditions, the diagnosis tends to be problematic. And we know our patients also, they go for years sometimes undiagnosed or not properly diagnosed because of the rare condition, uh, doctors do not necessarily often have that thought in mind. And that there's of course also complex differential diagnosis with other uh, peripheral neuropathies and that are potentially uh, caused by other conditions. So firstly, think about it because it does affect patients and importantly, this disease does have a therapy that brings a, a big improvement to the patients. Neurology conditions are very tricky. Not all of those conditions, even if we are able to diagnose, would we be able to offer a therapy that actually works uh, for, for the disease. With CIDP, there are effective therapies available for the patients. And IG therapy has been very well proven and documented to bring the benefits. Important, I think, um, what I also want to um, kind of convey here is that patients are different, they have different needs, that the disease progression are different, and for that subcutaneous um, formulations are important. Hycubia would provide that very infrequent administration with few needle sticks that is unique for the facilitated subcutaneous formulation, such as Hycubia is. So I think having the options is important, so healthcare professional can pick the right uh, therapy for every individual patient. Thank you.